We move on to the next uh, event, which is the startup pitches and demos. Uh, we will start with, uh, I would like to invite Ms. Shahin Ansari Murthy, co-founder Malgadi, to present. Uh, yeah, this is okay. Then it's fine. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Um, and I, I should thank Yasharia and Global Spin and uh, NFDI and Vasme and everyone for having me here today. Um, see, the true spirit of entrepreneurship is not only about making money or, uh, you know, it's not about wealth uh, accumulation. I think um, it's about the spirit of understanding the true essence of entrepreneurship, the ideas, the immense ideas that we have that need to be celebrated. So whoever understands our culture in society and bridges a bill, uh, uh, I mean, uh, builds a bridge uh, to connect um, entrepreneurs and everyone is a true um, cultural entrepreneur, I would say. And so Malgadi is here to celebrate culture and connect communities and people. Oh my God, my phone is loud. <laughs> and connect communities and uh, build an entrepreneurial entrepreneurship future. Uh, so to talk about Malgadi, we started in 2013. Uh, it was a fabulous journey. We created a concept store in Chennai uh, where we had um, uh, different lifestyle products, name it from fashion to furniture to lighting to events. We've done uh, fundraisers, we've done, uh, you know, uh, worked with NGOs, we've done uh, educational sessions and many, many more things at the store, which was very experiential for people. And people appreciated the space and the kind of experience that we gave people who came to Chennai. And I think it was one of a kind store in Chennai and we were ranked as the top 10 quirky stores uh, in India. Uh, in the Condé Nast and uh, Vogue and other magazines. Uh, so it was a fabulous journey, of course, until the pandemic hit us. And we were a bootstrapped company, and it was only me and my daughter and a few uh, youngsters who ran the complete show for eight years. Uh, but uh, Chennai, uh, Ch yeah, please help me with that. So uh, to Chennai, we were new, and uh, people would love to come to the store. Uh, but now the pandemic has taught us to reinvent, to rethink and come back as maybe a more sustainable brand. And since I'm heading the Women's Indian Chamber of Commerce Industry as the president for the National Handloom Council, I've been um, uh, exposed and I'm networking with so many of the, the clusters and weavers out there. We have different uh, state presence in almost all the parts of the country. Uh, we have... Uh, the experience, the research, the documentation from so many of our state uh, leaders who are leading the councils. So this has made us rethink our uh, brand philosophy. And not that we were not working with sustainable designers. We had so many designers who only worked with hand looms uh, and we worked with uh, no waste designers, recycle, upcycle designers and all kinds of things at the store. But now the challenge is we are going online. We are not as a physical store. We might be coming back as a physical store very soon, which of course we do need a lot of support. Uh, and going online is also new to us, but we are willing to explore because we can go global, we can touch livelihoods, we can work with um, grassroots level artisans, which we already have been in talks with. We are going to be tying up with different organizations um, and uh, of course grassroots level weavers and entrepreneurs as well. So yeah, you can see our vision and mission and we care about what we want to leave behind. So that's the whole idea why we are inventing, reinventing Malgadi and coming back as a global platform and connecting with all our global leaders. And since we also have the G100, which is a part of my organization, we have con uh, connects with 100 countries, which we can make use and completely expand on the sustainability angle as well as, uh, you know, be it fashion or lifestyle products. So, uh, um, yeah, we would like to go to the next slide. Yeah, so this is sustainable clothing is an approach towards sourcing, manufacturing, and designing clothes, uh, which maximizes the benefits to the fashion industry and society at large. So and now we are also tying up with Cascom, which is a collaboration with Malgadi, 
and uh, they are working with indigenous cotton. So they are a big resource of uh, indigenous cotton, so we are working with them. Uh, and why choose us? Why do you want to choose Malgadi? Like I told you, we are the pioneers of cultural entrepreneurs and the importance of culture in society. We are focusing on the importance of culture in society. So we have done a lot of events, like I mentioned earlier, at the store. We recently did a um, conference, a uh, wiki conference, which is called Interwoven Identities in Chennai, just a, a month ago. And we did have our minister, handloom minister, who came over. And we had an exhibition, we had a fashion show, and we had lovely sessions and brilliant speakers over two days. It was a very good event. And we've started our uh, wiki journey as well. And yes, we have worked with NGOs, fundraising, we have done, we've done, you know, fun events at the store. So now we need to take this on an online platform where we can be more experiential for people to have that immersive experience. So definitely we do need blockchain intervention, AI, and things like that, where you can create that experience online. Having a flagship store was easier, but this is more challenging, I guess, because we will reach to a global audience and we look to um, build a fantastic community. We have a great uh, team, which is uh, five women. It's uh, my daughter, me, Ranjani is here, and then we have two more uh, lovely women, from one from Delhi and one from Mumbai. So we've, and we have worked with this amazing project at Malgadi for continuous three years, which was the White Rainbow Project. So we have a lot of experience working with different kinds of people, different kinds of organizations. We've done a lot of events. And uh, yes, we do know what sells, what we sold well at the store. Uh, I think it's more about how you present it, how you reach the audience. And like Arena had mentioned, marketing is a huge, huge uh, important factor, which we, we do need a lot of people to come on board and support us wholeheartedly. Yeah, this was another project we did at the store. So we are in the process of setting up a hybrid business model. You know, venturing into offline and online um, across in stores across India. So we are in discussion, like I was telling you, with a lot of um, stakeholders of the industry. We would love to actually connect with more people that we've met here today. We are working with HEPC also. I have registered with HEPC. Malgadi is also with them. So we look forward to travel along. And we are, uh, Malgadi is owned by Fab Tribe Private Limited. And this is our team. Yeah, so we look forward to all your support. And we need to learn a lot. We are learning, we are growing, and we look to sustain a livelihood and connect livelihoods. Thank you so much, Jai Hind. Can you please come? Ma'am, can you please? My daughter is actually the face of Malgadi. I've just been supporting her. I started the journey, but then she, started, she continued, and she's heading the Malgadi. But now we have a great team also. Ranjini, why don't you come? Please come. She's also a team, Malgadi team. Thank you so much. Uh, we have the team Malgadi here. Can we have a huge round of applause for the entire team? Thank you. you. Ma'am, you can move to the center stage. Yeah. I would request Mr. Yesh Arya to felicitate the team of Malgadi. Thank you very much. I would now invite Mr. Dharmveer Singh, co-founder, Trace Yan, to present. Hello everyone, 
it's uh, <laughs> been a great pleasure being here it's a wonderful crowd and the diversity here is phenomenal i would like to thank mr yes arya and dr ajit nigam for making me part of this event my name is dharambir singh founder and managing director of block cube and we are here with tre sian a spp of block cube dedicated to textile industry we at block cube have been working for about 7 uh, years now on blockchain technology and its implementation in various domain we successfully implemented our solution in telecom industry it's the one of the world's largest blockchain implementation in the world and in india as well it directly or indirectly has impacted the billions of people across the country and now we are designing solutions in other domains such as education healthcare and textile as well coming to textile being one of basic necessity of human kind it's one of the oldest industry in the country but being largely unorganized and due to its complexity at the ground level we haven't much of penetration in terms of technology in this domain we all know and agree that we have quite a few issue in the domain related to traceability sustainable developments and counterfeits and circularity many of dignitaries here during their uh, address spoke about these issues and how emerging technology like blockchain and ai and digital team technology can solve some of these issues for good looking at how there is an innovation gap and it's the need of our we, uh, we designed tracean a blockchain based platform to enable traceability in the supply chain along with the traceability we have also included a blockchain based mechanism to enhance the income of farmers the artisans basically the producer that do not get the right proportion of compensation that they should from get from their value uh, chain not only that the tracean blockchain we are also going to ensure the adherence to the sustainable development goals during the manufacturing processes and as part of the traceability tracean blockchain would include the quality parameters origin markers and gis to bring the trust of quality that we spoke of last but not the least for design counterfeits we would, uh, we would be collaborating with the design innovation centers and leveraging tracean's blockchain to store these immutable data to make forging nearly impossible i think thank you then Thank you sir I would now call upon Mr Yash Arya to felicitate Mr Dharamveer Singh co-founder Tracean Can we have a huge round of applause from the audience please Finally I would like to invite Mr Mohan Kumar R PhD founder Fan Play Internet of Things Hi, I'm Bharat from Fanplay. I'm representing Dr. Mohan Kumar. He's unfortunately not able to travel today. Uh, so what you see on the screen is uh, Fanplay to the power IoT. And uh, yeah, uh, before I go into the virtual world, um, I would definitely want to show you this. Uh, you might wonder why I'm, you know, showing a, you know, at leisure wear or so whatever this is. to a conference which is all about textiles right you already know a lot about this but what's what's different in this is uh, is the technology that comes with this before i go into the technology part 
can I ask every one of you a question uh, right now? That is, um, how many of you are breathing right now? Yeah, right, it's, a, it's an obvious thing, right? But until I asked, it was subconscious, right? Uh, so that's what we're doing. We're uh, capturing heart rate through this jersey. This is an athleisure wear for professional sports stars uh, and also people who want to grow up the uh, sports ladder. So this is what we do, performance management system for sports teams and events. It's a digital uh, fitness platform uh, for um, you know gym chains to use this as a tool and uh, capture heart rate data real time. Uh, yeah. So this is how we see the entire sports ecosystem. Uh, uh, we, we look at fans as the foundation of sports and we look at kids and then amateurs and then professional players who can use this as a tool uh, and stitch the entire sports universe through the power of IoT, right? Uh, so what's the technology? This, this is the smart jersey, India's first smart jersey we are launch we've launched. <coughs> and. Uh, as I said, it stitches the entire sports universe together. Uh, it's as good as your skin. It's like your um, casual inner wear, but with some technology. Uh, what technology I'll come to uh, in a bit and wrap up quickly, um, since we not have time. Uh, so the technology... Sorry, I'm not... Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so basically this slide explains uh, what what are the what are the components in this? It has an ECG. It has two ECG patches. You might have you might know that smartwatches capture heart rate data through some various means of hitting light into your skin and so on. But uh, I I recall someone talking about conventional way of doing things. And ECG patch is the most conventional way of do uh, recording heart rate. And we are bringing this in this uh, textile, um, and we are connecting it to an electronics, which I'm currently wearing and I'm recording my heart rate, by the way. Uh, so this is the electronics which connects to the jersey and that translates into the platform, the fan play platform. And you can record heart rate every second. And this is the basic analytics for, for a coach to see and uh, understand their uh, athletes or even uh, you know students who are practicing at the grassroots level. And this is the athlete facing interface. Um, I, can, I can show you the live demo of the app somewhere there, but here uh, I could show you the overall flow of the app. Uh, that is the live heart rate being recorded and your heart rate zones and all that. Uh, so for those of you who are interested in heart rate zones, we can discuss a little bit further how you shift from one zone to another and so on. Uh, this is possible only with this kind of a jersey and not a smartwatch because smartwatch doesn't uh, record every second data, but this one does, and this is more or less like your inner wear. And yes, we do have a, a women's version as well. And apart from this, so this is our marquee product. Apart from this, we are into fan engagement. Uh, we work with teams, for example, we are partners with Chennai Super Kings, uh, which is the home team of this city, and uh, we, are, we have worked with a couple of IPL, ISL teams as well. And we try to capture fans' emotions as well through wearable technology again. Uh, and this is our basic case study about how emotions play a huge role uh, during uh, IPL matches, right? And uh, yes, um, some of you might be uh, interested in the GDPR and how this data is being handled. We handle everything in the um, Azure cloud and we are GDPR compliant. Uh, and this is our, uh, this thing, you can reach us, info at Sanplay IoT and our website. Yeah, uh, I hope that was useful for you guys and looking forward to catching up with you later. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bharat, for representing uh, Fanplay. I would request Mr. Yash Arya to felicitate Mr. Bharat and receive a small token of appreciation on behalf of fan play. Can we have a huge round of applause, please?
very interesting and three diverse pitches that we had from three different founders and co-founders. Interesting one. With this, we move on to the last event for the day, a presentation by Mr. Srinivas Rao, Deputy General Manager and Regional Head, India XM Bank on Export Promotion. Good evening, everyone. I am Srinivas Rao, Regional Head of, from Export Import Bank of India, Chennai. Uh, I'll give you a brief presentation on Exim Bank's products and services. Exim Bank was set up under an act of parliament in 1981 by the government of India. We are wholly owned, 100% owned by the government of India. Uh, our role uh, as a policy business we will do and this policy business will be guaranteed by the government of India and we have a strong regulatory capital position and Exim Bank will have access to the multiple sources of funds both onshore and offshore. If you see this slide we have the various kinds of uh, financing program. Under export finance, we have the lines of credit. It is a G2G business. Then buyer's credit, NEIA. We have pre-shipment and post-shipment credit. And then we will give the non-fund-based business like guarantees and LC. And in, when it comes to export capability creation, we are offering the term loans and then working capital and term loan under export product development export facilitation, overseas investment finance, then import finance, and then loans for R&D, and then Uberte Sitare, and uh, non-fund-based programs. I will come to the details in the next slides. And it, when it comes to the resource raising, uh, government of India is the shareholder. So we have received uh, 750 crores in financial year 21-22. And for the current year, 22-23, there is a budgetary allocation of 1,500 crores. And the uh, resources we have raised during 21-22 is uh, rupee resources of around 19,046 crores. Foreign currency resources we have raised around $2.2 billion, $2 billion. And uh, our rating is uh, at par with the government of India rating. This is the lines of credit program. It's a government to government uh, business. It's a proactive mechanism to share the India's development experience with the partner countries. India Exim Bank extends and operates LOCs on behalf of government of India and also extends on its own. Uh, the loans outstanding under LOCs as on 31st March will be $6,609 million. We have grown at a CAGR of 13% over the last 10 years, and it is around 41% uh, of the bank's total loan portfolio. Uh, as on credit commitments, as on 31st March, we have issued 310 LOCs covering 66 countries with credit commitment of $32 billion. Recently, in the financial year 2022, government of India has uh, announced six LOCs aggregating to $1.13 billion. And these are some of the reason-wise breakup of the LOCs. In Asia, we have given 53% and Africa around 40%. And those are the sector-wise breakup under the LOCs. And the next program, what we have called is a buyer's credit under NEA program. Under this program, the credit facility can be given to the overseas foreign government 
or government-owned entities for import of goods and services from India on deferred credit terms. It is covered under the NEA trust. NEA is a trust set up by the Minister of Commerce. It is uh, operated through ECGC. It is called National Export Insurance Account. The credit period normally will be between 8 to 12 years period and longer term uh, tenure also can be considered on case-to-case -case basis. Under this program, maximum 85% uh, of the contract value can be given as a facility. And the higher credit amount also can be considered on a case-to-case -case basis. These are the reason why sanction amounts. It comes to, when it comes to West Africa, we have done around 54%, then SARC 25%, and then there are, those are the section, uh, sector-wise uh, sanction amounts. Under the commercial business, we have done 129 proposals with aggregate value of uh, 30,806 crores. Under the commercial business, during financial year 2022, and we have supported 75 project exporters with a contract value of 19,380 crores in 39 countries. And uh, as on 31st March, we have financed around 652 joint ventures or wholly owned subsidiaries set up by over 483 companies across 78 countries. This program is called the Overseas Investment Program. Under this Overseas Investment Program, the term loans will be extended for companies to make a mark in the overseas markets as a manufacturing hub to invest abroad for seeking resources, markets, efficiencies, or even strategic assets. Loans can be extended in INR and foreign currency or any other foreign currency uh, available with Exim Bank. And the repayment and tenor will be structured suitably. Normally, it will not exceed seven years other than the greenfield projects. Here, the promoter contribution will be 20%. That means 80% uh, can be given as the loan component. If you see the purpose of the financing, here we can give the term loans to the Indian companies for equity investment in the overseas joint ventures or wholly owned subsidiaries. Or we can give loan to the Indian company for annual lending to their overseas joint ventures or wholly owned subsidiaries. Or we can give a term loan to the overseas joint venture or wholly owned subsidiary directly or any SPV for towards the capital expenditure or for working capital requirement or equity investment or for acquisition of brands, patents, rights, other IPRs. This depends upon the company's requirements. Some companies will, uh, will be ready to take in the Indian books. Then in that case, we can offer the loans to the Indian companies. Some companies will not prefer to take on the Indian books and they prefer to take it over to the overseas JV or SPV. So we can offer the term loans directly to the overseas subsidiary or the joint venture or the SPV. Then next program we have is the uh, term loans for the export oriented units. This is for financing the, uh, this financing will be extended both for the manufacturing sector and services sector also. The purpose of financing will include expansion, modernization, upgradation, or diversification programs. Then loan can be extended in the Indian rupees or US dollar or any other currency also, any other foreign currency. Repayment and tenor can be suitably structured, but generally will not exceed 10 years. Here the minimum promoter contribution will be 20%. That means 80% can be given as the loan component. The next we have the another program called the production equipment, production equipment finance program, PFP. Under this, we can offer a term loan for procurement of machinery or for import of any plant and machinery. The loan can be given in Indian rupees or US dollars or any other foreign currency. The repayment and tenor can be suitably structured, but generally will not exceed seven years with a two years moratorium and a five years repayment period. Here, the margin money will be minimum 10%. So the 90% can be given as the loan from Exim Bank. Okay. 
Then another program we have called, uh, we will give a term loan for research and development R&D expenditure. India Exim Bank encourages the Indian exporters to invest in their R&D spending in order to develop new product processes or IPRs for enhancing the export capabilities. Research foundations, institutes, SPVs promoted by the companies are eligible for the financing. It can be given both for capital and revenue expenditure. Again, the loan can be extended in Indian rupee or US dollar or any foreign currency. The repayment and tenure can be suitably structured. And then the next program is the project exports. Here, whenever, uh, if any Indian company uh, gets an uh, overseas project contract, uh, through international competitive bidding process or through any multilateral agencies like World Bank and uh, ADB, we can support those Indian project exporters, both by way of fund-based and non-fund-based limits. Fund-based will be typically pre-shipment and post-shipment credit. Sometimes we can offer the cash flow deficit financing also for uh, executing those uh, specific export projects, overseas projects. Then under the non-fund-based, we can offer the advance payment guarantee, performance guarantee, and retention money guarantee. Those type of uh, bank guarantees can be issued. And these are some of the consultancy assignments and institutional linkages uh, we have. India Exim Bank associated with the formation of the Saudi Export Import Bank, and then capacity building support for the Ghana Export Import Bank, and we have associated with the Afri Exim Bank in 1987 when the concept was first started. Then Commonwealth Secretariat appointed Exim Bank for feasibility study of uh, Commonwealth small state trade finance facility and capacity building for export credit insurance in several countries like Sri Lanka, Rwanda, and Zimbabwe. And we have done the pre-feasibility study for setting up of Commonwealth Trade and Development Bank. Apart from that, India Exim Bank will conduct the outreach programs for awareness about the financing for capacity building workshops. And we do the outreach programs for the business opportunity seminars, knowledge dissemination, and then stakeholders discussions. This is the new initiative which we have taken initially, it is, uh, uh, recently. It is called the Uberte Sitare program. Under this, the objective is to identify the small companies with differentiated product, process, or technology. We have partner with, partnered with uh, SIDB for this program. And this, uh, collab we have the collaboration and ongoing engagements with the industry, IITs, and then uh, including various incubation centers. This program was launched by our Honorable Finance Minister Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman with our Exim Bank MD. Under this program, we can give the equity investment and uh, even the uh, term loan component also. Under term loan, we can give the loans for technical assistance also. During the financial year 2022, we have sanctioned uh, loans to 15 companies, aggregating to 306 crores both fund-based and non-fund-based, and dispersed about 153 crores. And we have supported various sectors such as aerospace, defense, auto, auto components, pharmaceuticals, engineering, electronics, leather goods, consumer durables, etc. And we have supported equity support to the two companies with uh, equity investment of 13.5 crores. These are the, some of the companies where we have financed the support, both in the form of equity and uh, debt under the overseas SRA program. Again, these are all the, some different innovative products and different technologies. And then uh, there is a, recently we have started another program called uh, trade assistance program. The objective of this program is to enhance the trade between countries by exploring the new markets. It increases the confidence of the counterparties in settlement of trade transactions. 
risk coverage for challenging trade transactions, and enables the overseas banks in target countries in establishing the working partnerships with the large number of commercial banks in India. This is mostly useful for the MSMEs because there sometimes their commercial banks will not have sufficient exposure limits to the overseas banks there. There, Exim Bank can pitch in, and we offer the counter guarantee to the Indian banks so that the commercial banks can, based on our guarantee, can offer the procedure, can offer the program. Then another. Another initiative is the factoring services we have started. This is like a receivables financing. Under this, it is again, this is a, against the traditional bank loan. It is preferred by the exporters, especially the MSMEs, as it improves their liquidity and can be structured as a non-recourse and off-balance sheet facility. So it is a receivables financing. It will be useful for the MSMEs because it is a non-recourse. That means without liability to the Indian companies. So it is a very good uh, product for the MSMEs. This is the export factoring transaction flow. Under this, we can repay immediately 80% of the invoice value. Balance 20% will be given after some given. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I would now request Dr. Sanjeev Lai, joined by Mr. Yash Arya, to felicitate uh, Mr. Srinivas Rao. Can we have a huge round of applause for the speaker, please? So with this, we come to the end of, of Knowledge Filled Day 1. I invite the organizers and the speakers of the day to have a commemorative photograph on the dais, please. May I request and invite the organizers and the speakers for today to please grace the stage for a memorable photograph. Excuse me. Participants, that Sir? tea is being served outside. Please, please, please. Please do join us. Okay, one more. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Please, 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 please. Okay. Thank you. One second, one second, one second. Okay. I'd also like to thank the behind the scenes team and the volunteers who have made this day a very successful one. Thank you each and every one who had stayed with us for the whole day and made it a grand success. Oh, okay. 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 O